Last bit is going to be on applications. So why are we doing this to you? This is what's going to seem like magic. Let's say you've got a relatively complex looking source. Twelve ohm resistor, and we've got this. Current source, we've got another current source maybe going in the opposite du direction. And we're interested in finding the voltage across this current source. Okay, get ready for the magic. Our first step is to convert this into phasor form. And in phasor form, we have to first double check that all of our Whoops, we have to first double check that all of our frequencies are the same. And then we're just gonna remember what our frequency is. And now we're gonna write this in phasor form, also called writing it in the frequency domain where this becomes the complex number two at an angle of 18. Resistors don't change their form at all. Let's see, how do we rewrite this? How do we rewrite three sine of 6t as a cosine? It's gotta be at the same frequency. We know that there's an offset of 90 degrees. Is it adding or subtracting 90 degrees? TJ, Debt, Jesse? Do we add or subtract 90 degrees to convert sine of 60 into cosine of 60? Subtract. Subtract, because E is hard. So you know if it's a choice between adding or subtracting, it's always going to be subtracting. So we're going to rewrite this as 3 cosine of 6t minus 90 degrees in the time domain. And now in the frequency domain, it's really easy. It's just 3 at an angle of minus 90. Similarly, whoops, unfortunately, I drew the arrow in the wrong direction. There we go. Now, this guy is just going to be, it's already in cosine form, so that's easy. It's, its angle is zero degrees. And we want to find this voltage. When we work in the frequency domain, we change lowercase letters values which are functions of time into uppercase values because these are now DC values. There's not changing. This is a DC value. This is a DC value. This is a DC value. We have just changed this weird AC thing of functions into this DC world where it's just like circuits one, except now we're working with these complex numbers. So how would you, uh, TJ, how would you, what would you do to this to find V? Think about, it's just a circuits one problem now. This is a DC value, DC value, DC value. We've got a voltage source, resistor, a couple of current sources, what would you do? Oh, you could simplify the current sources. You, you could, could absolutely change. simplify Subtract the current them. sources and you're not gonna change the voltage because the voltage is outside them. And meanwhile, what can you do to this guy so that everything's in parallel? Oh, you can change that to a, a, par a current source in parallel with the Just do a source transformation. So the source transform, let's see the plus is on the top, so we'll have to draw the arrow on the top. By Ohm's law, we're going to divide two at an angle of 18 by 12. And, you're in, and you already know how to do that. That's just one sixth at an angle of 18 degrees. Whoops. We've got our 12 over here. And now we can simplify these guys. If we want to draw it, I'm gonna say arbitrarily up, then it would be in this direction. And we would have to subtract, we'd add this, but it's in the opposite direction, so we'll have to subtract.
And now it's even easier. Now this whole thing becomes one sixth at an angle of 18. Both these guys are pushing current through. So we just add all these things up three at an angle of minus 90, minus five at an angle of zero. And all that is pushing current through this 12 ohm. So therefore V is equal to by Ohm's law 12 times one sixth angle 18 degrees plus three angle of minus 90 degrees minus five angle of zero degrees. <clears throat> you throw that into your calculator and it just returns 68 at an angle of minus 148 degrees. It does all the heavy lifting for you. Now you've got to go back into time domain. And so going back into time domain, if this is your frequency domain, this is your phaser, you can just read that right out. Cosine, we haven't changed the frequency. It's still 6T minus 148 degrees. That I know seems like magic, but all the heavy lifting was done by your calculator. Cool. We start off with time domain. We changed everything into cosines. Then it was easy to write it into phaser form. We just pretended these were DC sources, admittedly complex, but still DC. We used all the techniques you've been, use, you've been using in circuits one um, to analyze it. You get this complex number as a result. And then the last step is to convert it back into the time, time domain. The only thing I could say to make this even easier is we can simplify this to make it fewer keystrokes to put into your calculator. Jesse, if we were to write, here's the real part and here's the imaginary part. If we were to write three, so we're three, three units away from the origin and we're at minus 90 degrees. So this point is three in an angle of minus 90 degrees. If we were to write this in rectangular notation, what would this be? How much real part is there? for this complex number? What's its projection on the real axis? How much horizontal None. component? None. So we could easier write this as being a purely imaginary number. How much imaginary is there of this three at an angle of 90 degree, negative 90 degrees? Three. Three. So it's easy, so it's, we could just simplify this down into just J3. And TJ, same idea. What's five at an angle of zero? Is it zero? Uh, let's draw. Or it would just be, it would be uh, just five out on the real. It's just going to be five on the real. And that would give us our zero degree angle here. So this would be equal to five. And this is even now easier to plug into your calculators with, with fewer keystrokes. And although I don't ordinarily do this, I'll tell you that the exact keystrokes you'd use to, to convert this to is you'd put your calculator into the mode of degree and uh, complex polar because you want it to output a, a, this complex polar form. And then the exact keystrokes would be 12 open parentheses. You need a new parentheses for this, one over six, <laughs> that would be, we have to do this at an angle of 18. All right, so now that's our first complex polar. That's the hardest part. And then the rest is easy. Plus I3 minus five, and then we'll close off that, that whole part. And that's it. And then your calculator will return uh, wonderfully 68 at minus 148 degrees and you're done.